All right, for segment one today, it's just going to be one video, I think, I hope, should be. And we're going to cover the magic of Forbidden Lands. Now, we hinted at some things about the magic of Forbidden Lands in the past. We talked about the talents that turn into effectively magic spells. We also talked about how you need willpower and how to get willpower in previous episodes. Now we're going to tie all of that together and find out what it really means to be a magic user and what are the pros and cons. How powerful are you and what kind of nonsense do you have to deal with? We'll find out in just a moment. We believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds. The focus of the game should be on role-playing and having a good time. The core values of Hashtag RPGate and any good tabletop group are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity. The charity we support is the Wounded Warrior Project, a national nonpartisan organization whose mission is to honor and empower wounded warriors. Please refer to the description below for the link to where you can make your hopefully tax-deductible donation. Join us Thursday and Saturday evenings on twitch.tv slash Legion of Myth to watch Heathen Dog and his team of dirty casuals play multiplayer games for your mockery and enjoyment. Here on our YouTube channel, you can watch these game-related segments live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time or check out the Friday Night Show stream where our panel of guests opine, comment, and editorialize on the TTRPG hobby as a whole. Please like this video and leave a comment to appease the algorithm gods. Share this video on your favorite social media platforms to help us peer out of the shadows cast over us. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to Legion Myth for more tabletop RPG goodness. All right, there we are. Here is our wonderful Forbidden Lands cover. And let's click on the magics. Oh, that's right. Ooh. Anything change with magic? Because <laughs> I remember I read the first printing because that's what I have in hardcover. Uh, magic, magic, bind. Ma okay, so the effects of bind magic have been modified. Clarifying men wounds cannot regrow lost limbs. Base oh. power level cast. Okay, it's always equal to NPCs rank in the magic discipline. Makes sense. We'll get to that. Okay, seems like nothing major. Good. All right. Well, so. except for the guy who lost his arm. Well, it's just clarification. We kind of knew that anyway. Oh, all right. So, all right, here is Magic in Forbidden Lands. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put those into chat. Oh, and I want to say, I forgot to say, we read uh, Mercurius's uh, super chat, but I forgot to say thank yeah. you for the super chat. Never want to, I mean, there's never an expectation of that, like, whatever, he gave us super chat. No, no, we appreciate that. Thank you. So, what most people call magic is a catch-all term for forces at work behind the veil of the world, beyond what common folk understand or dare perceive. The magic users of the Forbidden Lands are a diverse group of individuals, including both sorcerers and druids. Now, there are more later as you get other books. No, I think, you know what? Now they think about it, I think all, they always fall under either sorcery or druidism. Now they think about it. But either way, there, there are. The this book, book is a starting point. If you get um, the Blood March or what's the other, the Bitter Reach, there is more magic in those. Uh, magic is a wild and unreliable force that can manifest itself in many ways. Right there. Doesn't sound great. <laughs> it doesn't sound great. Uh, there are no schools of magic. Okay, this threw me off at first. When you think school of magic, what do you think, Ethan? When you see the sentence, there are no schools of magic. Instead, knowledge is transferred from master apprentice, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now, uh, taking that whole sentence, I understand, that, oh, there's no, like, universities of right. magic. But if you just look at the first half of the sentence, you're like, what, necromancy? No, right, right. No evocation? Okay. That means we've been playing too much D&D &D in our life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it threw me off at first. I was like, I, I didn't read past the comma. I was like, you mean no schools? Went, yes, there are. You have the path of stone. You have the path. Of, like th 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 That's exactly it. No, it's transferred from master to apprentice. You're not going to find, as Heathen Dog said, you're not going to find the university, the enclave of magicians. Come on into Hogwarts. No. If you do that, somebody's about to, you're never going to see the light of day again. Think uh, Sith. There you go. <laughs> uh, to the apprentice in a number of broad categories called disciplines. There are seven disciplines in the Forbidden Lands core game, four of sorcery, three of druidic magic. By the way, as a reminder, uh, I've said this, I think every video, I have a character creation process step-by-step step of how to create a druid. I made that like three, four, five years ago, whatever it was, but it's still a video that uh, talks about how to make a druid if you want to see how to make one. And the link should be in the description below. 
Every discipline is linked to a specific talent. Now, I'm going to get something out of the way. I know I'm going to read it later, but I'm going to get something out of the way now because it's just rattling my brain and won't let me get this out of my head until I say it. Do you remember in Mutant Year Zero, one of the cool things about talents, I know that's a vague statement, so I'm not expecting you to read my mind, but... They always work. Okay, you, you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, he understood. Yes, but magic is the same way here. Now, what you're going to find here is that magic is more power than powerful than those mutations, but also has stronger drawbacks than those mutations. Okay. okay. Or poten potential potential drawbacks. Okay. So uh, the risk reward has elevated. But absolutely what he said, if you cast a spell barring some really extreme instances, the spell works. Now, what happens because of that? You know, did you get sucked into another plane of existence accidentally? Oops. Uh, you know, we'll find Shouldn't out have played later. A shifter, dumbass. What's that? Shouldn't have played a shifter. Well, th that you don't have to play. Everybody's a shifter in this game. Then I'm out. <laughs> but, you have, <laughs> but you have to roll a 66 to make it happen. Remember, this rolls D6 is like percentile dice. But anyway, right. let's let's get back to this. Every discipline is linked to a specific talent. That is a prerequisite to be able to cast spells within each discipline. So when you start the game, you'll have one because you have one profession talent that you can take. But as the game goes on, you, you can expand. Right. So, so and that way you can expand your your disciplines in magic. Yes. OK. To learn a new discipline or increase your rank in a discipline you already know, you should find a master with a higher rank than you in the magic talent and who is ready to share their secrets with you. <laughs> That's that's a lot of caveats and addendums. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. <laughs> this can require both persuasion and substantial compensation. Remember those social interaction tests that we talked about last yeah. week in the combat? Well, there you go. Or make a female character. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't work in this game. But, you know, hey, you know, if it works at your table... Without a teacher, the cost in XP for increasing the rank in a magical talent or learning a new one is tripled. So you can do it. Spending lots of points to make that happen. Yep. So really, that that comes into play when you're a higher level and finding someone more knowledgeable than you is all but impossible. Then you just go screw it. I'm going to triple it. Or the debt that he asks you to pay is really it's high. Substantial. It's like your left testicle, your second born child. Uh, you know, one. You know, I like that stronghold you've been building for two years. Yeah, I want that too. Yeah. <laughs> you, do you have the deed on you? Just sign it over. You'll be fine. Spells. Your attempts to use magic to impose your will on the world are called spells. A large number of spells are described later in this chapter. We're going to look over a handful and we're not going to look over them all, uh, even though the segment might be a little bit shorter because there's just no reason to. But we are going to look over some so you can see how that they, uh, they're handled. Okay. More will be published in upcoming supplements. And I promise you, this book and uh, come here. This look how thick this one is. Jesus. That's huge. Uh, they have way more spells. So buy your Forbidden Lands products at freealegion. Uh, is it com? Org? I don't know. Something. Uh, more will be published upcoming supplements for the game. You can write your own spells under the watchful eye of your GM. I have not found now, to be fair, I've not read through these all these books word for word, page by page. I have not seen a spell creation system. With that said, sit at your table with your game master if you want to make a spell. And if he's like, if that fits in my campaign, there you go. All right. Does this image look familiar to anybody? It's not an exact image, but the concept of this image, does it look familiar to maybe another game that somebody's covered or played at some point? I'm getting nothing. What is it? Dungeon Crawl Classics. Zoom now in he's, on his face. Well, he's casting realize. magic. Is he afraid? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you play DCC and you cast a spell, you're like, okay, my butt's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Spell ranks. All sp oh, and I want to say something in case people ask some really you know, in-depth questions. I have never had... I don't remember ever having a sorcerer in one of the games that I've run. Druids, yes. Sorcerer, I can't remember. Can you... Are you going to tell us why during the, during the data? Yeah, because people are deathly afraid of magic when they read this section. Oh, I, well, think, I think uh, overly so, but for a one-shot, you don't... Uh, you they just went with that. other, yeah. But, but also, since also uh, to be fair, also there are four players. You know I like to have six, if possible, yeah. but my one-shot's with four players. 
So you had the typical uh, healer for the spellcaster, uh, always a fighter, uh, then uh, usually a hunter, sometimes a rider. But, you know, so you kind of already had that baked in, but every druid, we need a healer, druid, druid, be a druid, and you're going to be a healing druid. So, so anyway, all spells in this chapter are rated in ranks ranging from one to three. There can be spells of even higher ranks. I have not seen those yet, but hey, why not? It's just willpower, right? <laughs> As a magic user, you can cast all spells that are at a rank equal to or lower than your rank in the related talent. And we'll look at the spell list in a moment. So let's be clear about this. If there are five rank one spells and you have rank one casting ability, guess what? You can cast all five of those spells. Super. Once you increase to rank two, you can cast all the rank ones and rank twos. Now, there is a way that you can cast higher rank spells, one rank higher. That's it. One rank. I think we're going to read about that in a moment. But uh, one rank higher than you. So if you have rank one ability, you can cast a rank two spell. But here's how I'm going to say it for Heathen Dog, because I want to see his reaction. For everybody else, you might not understand this. It's okay. Essentially, if you do that, you're casting raw magic. Ooh. No, I'm good. Okay, so. <laughs> that's an earth on reference for people drink uh but you can do it and you may have to nope but don't uh, rather don't die want... rather die well i don't know about that no uh, no no being being marked by horror or the equivalent in this game not nah, rather die. well okay Thanks. it is it isn't horror marking it's more the 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 damage that it does to your body and uh the 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 possible horror marking how about that uh, we'll we'll look at what the effects are right, in a moment. Right. Uh, for example, if you have rank two in the Path of Blood talent, you can cast all spells at rank one and rank two in the Blood Magic Discipline. Okay, that makes sense. Chance casting. If you really want to, you can cast a spell at one rank above the rank of your magical talent, as we just talked about. However, this comes at a great risk. You will automatically italicize, just in case you didn't understand what the word automatically meant, suffer a random magic mishap. Yay! You can never cast a spell that is two ranks or more above your talent rank. Now, to okay, be fair, but... most mishaps aren't deadly. They're just annoying. Okay, well, if they're just annoying, then fine, whatever. But we'll yeah, I'd have, I'd have to see the list of possible repercussions for that to yep. make an informed decision. Uh, can you have two six-siders ready? Uh, kind of like percentile uh, yeah. days, so of different colors? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll have, we'll have you roll in a moment, all right? Casting a spell is generally a slow action in combat, but there are also so-called power words that are fast actions. Dispel magic is a very notable one. Dispel magic is a very important spell in this game because that's how you're going to have your magical duels. Mm -hmm. uh, another type of spell are rituals that take longer time to cast. See the box text on the next page. Okay. Sure. Whether or not a spell is a power word or a ritual is detailed under each spell. When we look at the spells, you'll see that. Casting a spell requires a great deal of mental exertion and requires that you spend one or more willpower points. You Let me accumulate one willpower point per rank of spell? Yeah, but there are caveats to that, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, you accumulate willpower by pushing dice rolls, so you have to be a masochist. Yeah, you have to hate yourself just enough, but not, not, not too much, but just enough to get the fuel necessary to cast magic. Now, we so, learned that you don't actually have to take damage. You know, you might not roll any skulls to take damage, but you have to risk taking damage in order to accumulate willpower. Right. The more willpower you spend, the more powerful the effect of the spell is. And you'll actually see here pretty quickly that... Wizards, scales up pretty fast. Yeah, wizards can be pretty powerful. Again, but there is a risk-reward side to that. So there, there can be... If you like big flashbangs, this might be the class for you. Now, the number of willpower points you spend when you cast your spell is called the base power level. Dice rolls and other factors can further modify the power level. Okay. So you spend two willpower. Uh, in fact, I think that there's an example down here. Base power level two. Yeah. So ingredients. Most spells in this chapter list ingredients or objects that can, can, not you have to, can be used to cast a spell with greater effect. If you use the right ingredients, the power level of the spell increases by one. Oh, so this is very similar to Mage the Ascension, right? Where you're using a focus. Sure. Focus you helps still, you cast magic better. Yeah. Yeah, so you can still cast without having the material components, but this will make it more powerful. 
You must still spend at least one willpower point to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Once the spell is cast, the ingredient has been spent and cannot be used again to cast the spells. Okay, so you're back to D&D where you're carrying around all kinds of material components if you want the extra oomph. If you want the extra oomph, yeah. Rolling dice. Unlike skills, you can never fail at casting a spell. We said that at the beginning, but because it's based on talents, it's very similar to the mutations of other games, your spell is going to work. Instead, you roll a number of base dice equal to the number of willpower points you spend. So, Heaton Dog, a moment ago, what we said, you spent two willpower points, so you'd spend two dice. If you roll one or several successes, those are sixes, the spell is overcharged. That's generally a good thing. Sure. And if you roll one or several skulls, you suffer some sort of magic mishap. You it's cannot make this roll again, just like using you mutations in the game. Yep. Overcharging. When you cast a spell, every success you roll increases its power level by one. Oh, damn. And we'll talk about power level in a little bit. For example, if you spend two willpower to cast a spell and roll two successes, its power level is increased to four. And if you use the material component, it's five. It's five. So let's imagine this for just a moment. You've got a spell that does one point of damage per power level. Sure. And this scenario just happened. You spent two willpower, but it increased to four with the two successes, and you use that, that uh, material component. That's five. You just did five points of damage to somebody. Um, do you remember what the attribute scores go up to in this game? What? If you max it out and put everything in, the highest one you can have is a six. So even the strongest dude out there is almost dead. Yes. And most and people... the average person is quite dead. Yes. Okay. Now, do you see the power level of magic? Yes. All right. Now, magical mishap. Let's go. Let's, let's flip the script for a moment. Uh-oh. If you roll one or several skulls, so ones, uh, when you cast a spell, you have unleashed powerful forces but are unable to control them and you suffer a magic mishap. Roll D66 and up for the table on the next page. Go ahead and roll, Heaton Dog. Okay. Call high. 24. Or 24. Um, your spell drains your energy, inflicting one point of damage to agility. So you just took one agility point of damage for doing that. That's and not great. That's not great because the wizards aren't known or sorcerers aren't known for having high agility. No, no. I mean, that, that could kill me if I only had one. Yeah, if you'd already been fatigued somehow. Or if I only had one. Well, you have to start with two. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's, you know, status effects that can bring yeah, it down to one. Fair, yeah. fair. Absolutely, yep. So, yeah, that, that could be bad. And go, go ahead and roll one more time. Let's just look at one more. 16. 16. The spell suddenly makes you very thirsty. Okay, you... thirsty is in bold type, so yeah. it's it doesn't mean I, I need to drink a water or I need some Gatorade stat. It means uh, some you kind of here, You weren't here last week, so that's a condi- thirsty is a condition that is cured by dr- drinking one unit of water. Okay. Now, remember, units of water take up encumbrance. That's actually, sure. that's part of your survival mechanic. That's on top of what you need to drink. Per, you have to drink one unit per day. Well, now you have to drink two units. One right okay. now, or you're going to be suffering whatever the thirsty condition gives you. Go watch the last video. Okay. Uh, basically, you have a condition on you. Yeah, these don't look so bad. What are the it's higher you're, ones? It's because you're rolling low. Well, let's so usually do a 24 was the first one. Let's make that 42. Yeah. Let's flip the script. Make it 42. Okay. The spell also affects a friend or other oh. unintended victim. A healing or helping spell affects an enemy alongside the intended target. <laughs> oh, that's just mean. Okay. Okay. Stop. Then that's you this- just the game system being a dick. Because it says a spell also affects a friend or other unintended victim. That means a damaging spell will also affect, affect a friend or someone you think is a victim. That's not the bad guy. So you can't accidentally hit two bad guys with this. Right. That, that's but what, that's... if it's a healing spell, it's guaranteed to heal the enemy. That's horrible. Th- that's why you don't want to roll high. Let's, so you get a 16. Let's look at what 61 is. Okay. Your magic attracts a demon from another dimension. Oh. The GM can create a demon randomly. See page 70. By the way, there are demons in the Game Master Guide, but it allows you to pick and choose and kind of mix and match and you know make all types of crazy demons. It's actually pretty cool. Okay. Or create it herself. The demon appears within the next quarter day and will create all kinds of trouble. So within six hours, you're going to have a demon messing with you. It could be a small little imp. It could be something more substantial. I would base it on however many power points you spent. 
Right, right. How how powerful is the spell? I mean, if you it's a one or a two, you're you're getting that imp or something else that's just basically annoying you, the annoying the crap out of you. Mm-hmm. But if you got five, six, seven power level, then you're you're getting an arch demon coming in and going, "Hey, uh, why am I here? Oh wait, it's your fault." Yep. Well, let's read the worst one because it's my favorite one. Your met number sixty six. You have to roll a six and a six. Your magic rips open a rift to another dimension, and a demon pulls you over to the other side. Time to make a new character. Your oh. old character will come back as an NPC d sixty six uh, days later, but will be uh, changed. That that's like kicking you in the face, and then while you're on the ground, kicking you in the balls again. That's just mean. Not the only do you just flat out lose your character. But you're going to have to fight him when he comes back with your brand new character who's probably significantly weaker. And and the game master is going to give him more powers that you never had, so you're jealous of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, or if you get a one or if you get a three or a four power, you get a sleep paralysis demon. Why three or four? Doesn't that hurt you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. You, you, uh, the, this, this game does mental trauma. A sleep paralysis demon is mental trauma. You're going to wake up with new mental trauma every day. It's going to be great. You have a great time. 56 is a, a creepy one. The, uh, the force of the magic breaks bones in your body. Immediately roll for a critical injury. That's not awesome. So yeah, it's, they start with like, whatever, uh, what's 11 to 13. Someone witnesses your magic and tells other your reputation increases one step. Hey, that's actually a good thing. So your magic mishap can, if you roll the lowest possible, 11, well, 11 through 13, you get a benefit. Sure. <laughs> None of the other ones. Yeah. But, you know, hungry and thirsty isn't really a thing. Like, whatever. Hungry and Depends thirsty. on how you're doing with your survival rolls. If your survival rolls are fine, you're right. Right. If you're, survi- if you're already on edge. <laughs> okay. So when we're talking about, uh, oh, let me go back up here. I thought we were going into range. That would be next. Uh, if you cast a spell at a lower rank than your talent rank for the discipline, so you have a rank two in 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 healing, because that's all I can think of right now. Blood magic. You have rank two in blood magic. But you want to cast a rank one spell? Sure. You may opt to roll one less die for, for every point of difference. So it'd be one. In that case, it'd be one. You could do three, uh three down to one, you could choose to roll two two less die because there's a two rank difference this reduces the risk of a magic mishap but also makes a spell less likely to overcharge you're basically rolling less power dice mm-hmm. less base dice based on the power if the result is zero dice or less don't roll at all the spell simply works as intended you're okay getting... hang on hang on uh let me let me see if i can wrap my brain around that one so if the result is zero dice or less that means that what if i'm casting a rank one spell mm-hmm. And I, I am a rank two. I can choose to roll one less die, mm-hmm. and that'll be just one die, right? Mm-hmm. But if I'm rank three, well, you can I... choose. You can choose how many willpower you're going to spend on it. Okay, I'm only going to spend one willpower, but okay. that means I get one die. But I decided to go one rank down. Now it's zero. Yes, if I, I think so. <laughs> that sounds right. I, I'd have to see it on the table, but but that sounds right. Yes. If you get okay. down to zero dice, it just works. It does its base damage, base effect, or whatever. Yeah. No bonuses, no minuses. Right. It's a cookie cutter thing. You've got this down. Mm-hmm. You know exactly how much magic energy you pour into it for exactly how long. You you can finesse it just right, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You get you a go. you get a carbon copy of the spell every time. Probably not going to murderify anybody on that. At least no. not a that's something big. But you'll get its attention. Uh, you'll at least get some healing. Like maybe I'm not I'm not trying to risk it right now to give you big full healing. I just need to get you up and walking again. Oh, there you go. Let's go. No, um, I don't know why. I feel like there's something that I got wrong with what you're saying there. It probably is, but we're going to get to that later. Probably yeah. so. That'd be fine. Uh, range or Ronnie Abadi. He'll uh, he'll make a comment after this video goes live, and he'll correct me. He does a good job of that. Oh, okay. I forgot to say time out. I forgot to say this last week. I told I told folks last week. See, look at that, peep man, guys in chat. I said, remind me to say what he corrected me on, and you guys didn't do that. I made a very glaring mistake because of a house rule I use in all my Year Zero Engine games. Okay, 
and heathen dog actually backed up my house rule because he doesn't know any better. It's not that he's, he's right. He just didn't know any better. Okay, heathen dog, I'm going to ask this question again of you. I okay. asked it a couple weeks ago. Okay. If you are rolling uh, four attribute or four base dice, two skill dice, and one gear die, and I give you a negative three modifier, how do you roll those dice? Uh, well, technically, it would just be add them all at minus three, but you would be taking the three away, not from gear, not from skill, but from your ability. No, no, be skill. You take them from your skill. But skill. I, said, okay. I, I, I knew minus, it was one of them. But I said there are two skill points. Yeah, there's minus, minus three. So minus what happens three. to the third one? Yeah. So before, and this is my house rule. My house rule is I just take it away from the attribute die. Sure. That's not correct. And then how do you do it? <sighs> and you're about to hear why I made a house rule. <laughs> okay. You, you have a negative die. So what you do is you minus the two skill dice. Sure. And then you roll, you add in one skill dice to make okay, <laughs> which is a negative die, and your if you roll a six on that one, it cancels a six out on one of the other dice. Yeah, that seems unnecessarily complicated. It's not when you roll it on the table, but when you're trying to explain that to a new person. Remember, I've only run this game as one shots, mostly for new people. Mm -hmm. That you don't want to you don't want to do that you don't want to try to say that to them so i house rule it to be just take one off your attribute die and let's move on otherwise you get somebody who's new who might be excited about the game they can lose some excitement pretty quickly right there hmm. if you have a, a table of experienced players and they're not going to care they can and they can easily help out the new player but i just want to i just want to put that out there that's a correction from like three okay. videos ago or whatever okay. um so you have to watch this one to find out what it is. So, all right. Uh, the results of your list don't roll also. Okay. Range. Every spell has a range. We'll see that in the description. Duration. Every spell has a duration. Immediate means that the effect is instantaneous. It's like magic missile, right? Boom. Sure. Uh, quarter day is morning day. We will cover what quarter days are specifically in uh, next week when we talk about journeying and survival. Willpower points. Casting a spell requires at least one willpower point. No matter what, you have to spend at least one. This applies even if it does not explicitly say so in the description of the spell. So this, this is, is your general magical thing. Whenever you want to cast a spell, you must use at least one willpower point to pull the power from the universe. Yep. yep. Some complicated spells can't be cast as an action in combat as they require more time and preparation. A typical ritual takes a quarter day to perform. Rituals often have other prerequisites, such as ingredients that must be used to perform the ritual. By the way, oh, I know so we're, for, for ritual casting, ingredients are not an option; they're necessary. If it says it in the in the spell, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, we're seeing the word "quarter day" more and more today than we have other days. It's it's come up before, but we've seen it more and more. I don't know why I feel the need to say this, but I'm going to. People complain. That's one of the complaints I get about this game, and it annoys me because I don't think it's a it's a justifiable complaint. They don't like quarter day. Well, Why? what? You know, because everything happens in the quarter day, which is six hours. Why does it have to take six hours for me to do this? Why do I have to use six hours to do that? Why do I have to do six? I, why can't I take? What happens if I want to walk three hours, you know, take an hour to eat lunch and poop and then go do another, you know, five hour march? It's like, it's just not how the game works. Okay. That's why. You remember the rules of the game are the universal constants that happen in this world. Now, does that mean you can't walk for eight hours? No, the game master can easily make a ruling. But how the game is set up is for everything to happen under those quarter days. And I've never had anybody leave my table, but I have had people like, so how do we take lunch? Dude, it's just implied. Why does that matter? <laughs> like, do you, if you want to stop and have a little role-playing session, have stop and have a little role-playing session. But it doesn't matter. Things happen on the quarter day because that's just how it wraps up. When you're doing your survival roles, you're spending a quarter day hunting. You know, if it's, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it any other way than to say that's just how the game is built. It's okay. If that's not, you know, specific enough for you, you don't like that kind of abstractness, play a different game. I'll, and I'll tell you this, it works. After playtesting it, it works. Here. Now, Grimoires, do you, do you think you need a spell book? Well, no. I mean, because you learn all the spells once you get the prerequisite rank, right? So what do you need okay. a spell book for? It's very, by the way, you're going to see something similar, but not exactly the same as Earth done in this. 
So you don't need your spells written down to cast them, but it makes it easier to get it right. So Grimoires are highly sought after artifacts among sorcerers. If you cast a spell from a book or a scroll, its rank is considered one step lower than usual. Now you know how you can get rid of those dice down to zero dice? Oh, okay, okay, I see it now. Yep. In combat, you must spend a fax action readying your grimoire. Basically, what page am I on? Okay, right there. Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, <laughs> Excalibur, nice. Well, it's, it's actually a legitimate uh, charm of making from uh, Druidism. But I yep. saw it in Excalibur when I was a young boy, so that's yep. where it counts. Ah, there you go. Uh, in combat, you must spend a fast action. Uh, so writing down a spell requires you to first cast it once. Cast it, sure. uh, chance casting doesn't count. Then you must spend a quarter day with a quill in hand and make a lower roll. Basically, you have to go... Bleep, 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 bleep. Oh, shit, that worked. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, write that down. Exactly what I did. I turned my wrist this way. I, I, and I inflected this, and I cursed yeah. my mom, and it worked out. Okay. I hope my mom's okay, but you know... <laughs> uh, <laughs> So quarter day in hand and make a lore roll. Writing down a ritual takes two quarter days, so 12 hours. Sure. NPCs. NPCs don't have pools of will power points. Instead, when an NPC casts a spell, the GM may simply choose a base power level up to the caster's rank in the magic discipline used. By the way, that's a change from the first printing. Yeah, this seems uh, like NPC casters are a lot stronger than PC casters. They can be, but... Uh, how do I say? Yes, they can, but everything about NPCs seems like it's stronger until the players use teamwork. Uh, plus one if an ingredient is used. Roll normally to determine any overcharge or mishap. So again, they can mishap as well. And let's look at this example. I normally skip the examples, but we're going to put this all together here. The half-elf, Nirmena, has rank two in the Path of Blood talent and can cast blood magic spells up to that rank. So, up to sure. rank two, right? When she is confronted by a Rust Brother at near range, because that uh, we're not looking at spells right now, but that is the range of the spell, she chooses to attempt to immolate him. Sounds good. That, that's, that's mean. Putting people on fire is mean. He carries a torch. Now, Ooh. notice that. Not she carries a torch. He car The Rust Brother is carrying a torch. Oh. She is now going to use that torch against him which helps her channel the fire in the Rust Brothers' blood. Because, uh, as we'll see, fire is a uh, component. She spends two willpower points to power her spell. As she is a half-elf, this counts as three willpowers, and she rolls three base dice. So, you know, half-elf is, you know, give and take. She rolls Dirty mud blood. Well, yeah, but uh, notice that she got two uh, banes also. Two, That's two ones. because, you know... Dirty she mud blood, it. so you go. <laughs> she yeah. rolls one, one uh, boon or success and two ones. The power level is five. Three from the willpower points she spent. Oh, sorry. Three from willpower. Two, two points she spent, one for being a half elf, uh, two for the success, sorry, one for the success and one for the torch ingredient. Oof. Sure. So that's five. One more time. Two for the willpower she spent, one for her being a half elf, one for her success, right here, the swords, right? Mm -hmm. the, or six if you're using regular dice and one for the torch ingredient that's five uh five oh. power power level the rust brother suffers five points of damage and burns like a human torch unfortunately uh Nirmena also suffers a magic mishap due to the skulls she rolls a 43 and the fire spreads through the room Oops. Nirmana's friends tirgar also suffers the damage this is that one he's where probably dead too because he suffers the same damage right Yep. Yeah, he's he's also dead. Probably. Yeah, unless, ninety percent chance that dude is charcoal. Unless briquette. he's an orc. <laughs> okay, fair. Then that, it's possible he has a six. Yeah. Well, it's also no, but remember, you have to kill orcs twice. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he'll he'll bounce back. That's right. I forgot about that. But hang on, hang on. So well, scroll back up for a second. Let me yep. see if I can if I can get my head around this. Um. Let's see here. Uh it's the ingredient thing. So the ingredient thing, you don't have to be personally holding or have the ingredient. It Correct. has to be within range of the spell and you can yes. use it. Yes. Okay. So this is near range. So any fire within near range, you can use as an ingredient. Yes. Outstanding. I like that. I put a caveat on that fire. I absolutely would allow. 
Yeah, fire uh, goes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Something like uh, needing a coin. I'm not going to allow you to use a coin in the corner of the room. That's that's me. That's me personally. I'm not saying it's a, it's with the rules or against rules. I'm saying that's me personally. Uh, there has to be some sort of con for me. There has to be some sort of contact with it. In this case, the fire is the fire's harder because you don't hold fire, but he is holding the torch. Yeah. So fire nearby. I just kind of see the fire leaping out at him. Sure. A, that's a personal house rule. House ruling. I'm not saying that's how the game works. I'm just letting you know that's what I do because otherwise what you'll end up having is like, well, wait a minute, there was a co there's a coin in that drawer. Just because I didn't know it was there doesn't mean I can't use it, right? It's magic. No, I'm not getting that argument. No, with that's you. exactly why you can't you can't use it because you didn't know it was there. You couldn't I, I, factor it into your spell. Now, for from my house rule, I'd be a little more lax. It'd be like it, you have to have an ingredient within the proper range of the spell. Yeah. Near, medium, far, whatever. And you have to clearly see the ingredient to be able to focus it into your spell. As long as those two things are right, you can use it. If, they, if they're not, oh, the coins are in his pocket. Yep. Even if you know the coins are in his pocket, you can't see them. You can't visualize them, so you can't factor them into your magic. That's fair. Yeah. And, and, I, and I've seen the whole coin thing happen. That's why that, that stuck in my head on a Let's Play I watched like two or three years ago. And it made me think of that. Um, now, would I allow somebody who has an obvious coin purse? That's a tough one because you that's... know that there are coins there. But yeah, again, you know we're it, getting but... way too pedantic. And exactly. that's for your table to decide. Yeah. So um, general spells. Now, general spells are spells every every sorcerer has or wizard uh, every spell caster has okay so it doesn't matter who you are you have the following spells as long as you're of the rank so the magic magic disciplines differ but there are certain effects and spells that all sorcerers and druids can use if skilled enough these are called general spells they also come in ranks but you can use any magic talent to cast them so if you have path of blood you can use path of blood to cast them if you have path of healing you can use path of healing to cast them so let's see what those are magical seal and we'll look over these, uh, probably all of these, because these general ones are pretty important. I know you want to cast your Path of Blood spells, but you're going to find yourself casting these more. Okay. Magical Seal, Sense Magic, Dispel Magic, which is, yeah, that's going to be probably your most cast spell. Magical Obscure Shield. Ma What's that? Magical Shield type thing. Um, it's your counter spell, for lack of a better term. That, and I know we don't play new D and D, but for the new D and D players, it, it's counterspell, um, obscure magic, bind magic, and transfer. So bind magic is making magic items, and transfer, which uh, we'll read that in a moment. That's a fun one. So, all right, and you now have weirdo here trying to explain to you how not to light a fireball under your own junk. Uh, so let's look at these spells. Magical seals, rank one. These are the general spells. Okay. Range arm's length, so you basically have to be able to touch the thing. And the duration is a quarter day. Ingredient, if you so choose to use it, is a piece of chalk. Using the spell, you protect a person or location no bigger than a human. Now, oh God, I, that's weird things that people argue about. Yes, it includes an orc. Okay, if you're a pl normal player character, just allow them to cast it, all right? Now... But I, I understand reading this, why people would, would say no, because it specifically says no bigger than a human. Yeah, that, that's, that's too much pedantry for me. If I know, so, I know, but it, that, that's, it's very specific. If somebody's playing, if somehow you let a player play a minotaur, I get it. You know, but if it's a human, all, all the, as far as I'm concerned, all of the PC races are human sized. Okay, so an orc is a little bigger. It's a football player. He's your pro wrestler. That's still basically human sized. Okay. So the power level of any spell cast against that person or place during the quarter day is decreased by the power level of the magical seal. Oh, neat. And with a piece of chalk being a really easy ingredient, that can be too easy. Yeah. Uh, be careful with that. Remember, this is forbidden lands. Everything's hard to come by. But chalk, with that, seriously, chalk. With that said, chalk wouldn't be that difficult as long as yeah. you can find some sort of civilization or a quarry any quarry of it pretty much anything because chalk is around pretty much every quarry yeah um uh, now i'm just saying if you're randomly out in the woods and you don't, you're not going to find chalk just laying on the ground necessarily but hey there's a role for that 
Uh, so what does this do? Well, it, I basically just gave him a magical shield. So if now you try to cast spells on Heathen Dog, let's say I gave him a power level three magical seal. It's going to reduce everything cast against him for six hours by three. So now that five points of damage that you could have taken and died is only two. Only being <laughs> subjective, but... Yeah, only being probably half or more of, of your health is gone and you're horribly burned and you're writhing on the ground crying and begging for death, but you're not dead, and that's the important thing. Correct. Sense magic. Now, you probably oh, that's just like uh, uh, detect magic, right? Well, you're yeah, partially... I, I, I can sense someone with, they say, a magical shield around them. The cool thing about this game is it pretty much says, if you're a magic user, um, you, you know magic. Okay, so right off the bat, you can sense magic. So what's the spell good for? First of all, it goes into short range, which is kind of cool. Range one. Uh, duration is immediate, so you see it all the time. And if you have a divining rod, it would just take a coat hanger, bend it, douse bend it. it yeah, you're good. <laughs> I, no, they're, they're, this is actually in the book. You can buy one. As a sorcerer druid, you automatically sense whenever someone uses magic within short range. So if Heathen Dog were to cast a spell next to me, I'd be like, oh, and you know he's over, what, 10 meters away from me? I'd be like, oh, you cast spells. That's neat. Even if he's trying to be sneaky sneaky about it. Mm -hmm. Or if an item you hold is charged with magical power. Hey, can I hold that sword for a minute? Yes, you can. Ooh, this is a magic sword. You just know. No rolling, okay? Now, if you want to know more about what kind of magic is involved, you must cast the sense magic spell. This is kind of like oh, identify. Okay. God, it's an identify spell. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Using this spell is also required to detect obscured magic. We'll look at that in a moment. Your power level must, must then be equal to or higher than the power level of the obscure magic spell. Okay. So basically, you can cover cloak something magical. It's like, oh, no, it's not magical. Don't look at this. And you can see past it if you try hard it's just a back massager i swear <laughs> dispel magic rank two. Uh oh what's this power word do you remember what power word is that's the fast casting stuff yep yeah so dispel magic rank two range short so your magical duels happen at you know pretty close range we're talking 10 meters mm -hmm. it's immediate and if you have iron filings you get a bonus with as often as you're going to be doing this you probably you know you, you don't want to go to a the whole bunch of iron filings in a nice waterproof pouch and uh you know you, the, sorry sorry fighter one of your swords is missing but you know i, I, I had just, to grind it down <laughs> kind of done it. you can interfere with the spells cast by other magic users this spell is reactive and breaks the initiative order in combat just like dodge and parry if you remember from last week oh right okay yeah you decrease the power level of your opponent's spell with the power level of your dispel now let's arbitrarily say you cast oh i already forgot the name of the damn spell Magic seal on yourself. Sure. Because why would you not? Yeah, it's <laughs> stupid not to. I mean, if I'm going into combat in the next six hours that, that I know that uh, Harkon the Black is involved, I'm going to throw that on. You know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on like, like a nice uh, comfy coat. Now, on top of that, you have your Dispel Magic. So you... Let's so you what would we say you drop down three because you had your magical seal on that was three, right? Well, now with your dispel magic, if you get two successes, that complete five points of horrific damage that was about to immolate you into uh, you know, uh, Joan of Arc. Yep. Well, now it's nothing. Woo. So it takes multiple steps, but is this not thematic of how wizards in movies and in books work? They have. Uh, the ability of well first of all they cast the ability to protect themselves from magic knowing that that is a temporary shield of some sort and then they have the ability to counter they don't just rely on well i hope my counter works oh, i'm screwed no they go in there with some foresight and some planning and then also have the immediate reaction available to them i think this makes perfect sense i like it i've had people complain about it like really i have to spend all that willpower put to make this happen Hey, uh, guess what the other guy's doing too? Spending all that willpower to try to, you know, a duel of wizards is a duel of masochism. <laughs> yeah. Masochism and strategy. Yeah, yes. That's basically what it is. Because, you know, uh, this, this power is a spell, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a spell. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a general spell, which means if someone else has this spell too, which they do. Yep. 
they can use it against your use of it if they wanted to as a reaction, right? That it, no. get, it can get weird real quick, but that's what happens well, in Wizard Duel. You're, Shit you're still real quick. bound between the fast action, slow action limitation. Sure. So you can counter spell, or I'm sorry, dispel magic and cast a spell. Sure. But this will prevent you from preparing a spell and getting the the more right, powerful right. version. You won't of the be spell. able to use your grimoire or or grab an ingredient or whatever unless you already have it in your hand. You planned on using it, you know, or, or grabbing an ingredient for a spell you weren't prepared for, stuff like that. You won't be able to do that mm -hmm. because you used your fax action as uh, as the counter spell type deal. Exactly. But it seems like you can counter a counter if you. Yeah, if you. Ooh. It's because it, it's a spell. It is also a spell. I've actually, I've never seen that come into play. Let's read this uh, more in depthly okay. and see what it says here, because it's a fast action. It's used, it's used as a reaction. I don't think you can because it's used as a reaction. It's actually but, a reaction. Okay, hang on. Someone cast, you, you, okay. You have an action and a fast action. Okay, mm -hmm. I go first. I cast, just say it, fireball. Okay. Right. And you, as a fast action, counter my fireball i haven't used my fast action either in reaction to your spell use no he can't do that why because uh, you because you're still doing your slow action because remember casting a spell is a slow action you can't use your fast action on top of your slow action he will get his fast action off before you now you still have your fast action available to do something to counter if after his fast action he decides to cast a spell on you which he probably is then you can use your fast action to counter that one. You can't counter his dispel in that regard. What I'm more concerned about is could somebody else with a fast action available? So while you're casting your spell and I use my fast action to dispel it, could somebody else use that to dispel my dispel? That's uh, what that's what I I'm working. Yeah. I be, because if if the if the only caveat to not being able to counter someone's counter is because at the moment you are doing a regular action so you physically cannot someone hiding behind a tree but but still within short range can counter his counter cuz it is that, a spell that would require cuz a person cannot act outside of his initiative except no, no, for this would be a reaction. reaction it's a reaction it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you roll the 1 or or a, or 100 for initiative I, whatever it is but uh, if he got last or first it's a reaction mm -hmm. which means it bypasses initiative. That's, that's an, I, I would have to check their forms up to find out, can a fast action be countered by another fast action? Because usually, no, you can't counter a dodge with, with something. Like, I'm not going to let him dodge. Well, like, there, there I, is not a fast action that counters a dodge. Right? I mean, you theoretically could, yeah, you could, you could probably parry a dodge. You could probably dodge a dodge. Shoulder block him. I mean, well, considering that, that what dodge, be a dodge is, because a, a, a dodge is is making sure physical contact doesn't happen. Uh, once again, a parry uh, is a block, which in which necessitates physical contact, but you can't dodge a dodge. Well, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. I will rule. No, you can't. I'm just going to be blunt about that. I will say, no, you can't. If your table, you want to allow it because it could be interesting. It yeah. could absolutely be interesting about it's like, why didn't my spell work? There's no. Oh crap! You know, you got somebody else whose whose dispel came in there. I could see this being interesting, but for for me, for the sake of keeping the game going, uh, even without seeing what an official ruling for that would be, is I would just say no. Like it's between these two here, and I know you could say, but I'm holding my action. I have stated that I'm conditionally waiting on watching him cast a spell. Then I'm going to throw the dispel out there. That's a tough one for me to argue. No, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Max and I both agree that this sequence of events cannot happen. See, uh, Wizard 1, cast spell. Wizard 2, I dispel. Wizard 1, cast a spell. Wizard 2, I cast... Yeah, no, no. You can't have the, you can't have the on top of counter, 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 counter. Because yeah. remember, the first wizard is doing a slow action. Yes. He's still, he's still finishing weaving his first spell. He can't yeah. react to anything while he's still doing that. It's kind of like he has both hands on the wheel. He, he can't you know he can't uh you know pick up his phone or do anything like that he's, he's yeah. concentrating on this he's in the middle of a turn for crying out loud keep calm down I, i'm really torn on the other part though like i'm yeah, saying because i'm a, saying a no guy but... hiding behind a tree you know yeah. it is a spell yeah counter uh, dispel magic is a spell it says it, it says yeah. so 
So that means it should be able to be dispelled. Now, the person you're casting it on cannot because he's busy. He's got his hands full. But someone still within short range, still watching, yeah. by the book, it seems so far, can dispel a dispel. As a reaction. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I don't want to get jumped down that rat. I would want to avoid that rabbit hole in my game, is what I'm saying. At the same time, it should be a perfectly viable tactic to do what you said. Like, hey, go out there and fight, and I've got the dispel when he tries to cast a spell on you. Sure. You, you know, so that's, that's really a tough one. I think what I'd ultimately rule, like, like I said, right off the top of my head, I'm saying no, 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 right? Uh, again, because I haven't had to deal with this. Uh, I usually have healers is yeah yeah wow is i i don't want to dive down the rabbit hole i think it makes sense though i think it does make sense i think you might be right on that one um it, it really just comes down to fast action versus fast action i i if there's some weird ruling that i don't know off the top of my head that talks about fast action versus fast action i would never discuss it this long at the table sure you know, we're kind of theory crafting here. Yes or no, and then after the game, yeah. everyone would make their case. Yes. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's continue on here. You decrease the power level of your opponent's spell with the power level of your dispel. If the result is zero or less, your opponent's spell has no effect at all. Or, I mean, hey, at least you, you hopefully, you know, dim down the damage a little bit, right? Sure. You must both roll for overcharge and mishaps, like Heathen Dog was saying a moment ago. Magic is a spell, right? It is so? a spell, yes. It, it overcharges and mishaps just like every other spell. And you must decide how many willpower you spend on your dispel before you both roll. Funny thing is, is I haven't used wizards on my side as NPCs yet. So it's always just been the players with NPCs. So I haven't run into this other than, you know, the player characters just doing some test rolls. What you know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of the shadow run scenario. How's that? I have one more wizard than you. I win. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, let's go on. Let's go to obscure magic. Its range is personal because it's for you. Its duration is immediate and piece of cloth. If you want to cast a spell unnoticed, you must obscure your magic. This requires one extra willpower point that does not count toward the power level of the spell. This is what okay. si silent casting, or is that what they call it now uh, in D&D? Obscuring magic does not count as an action in itself. To detect your obscured spell, Another magic user must actively survey the area by casting sense magic. So uh, you have to, you know, I feel there's foul magic afoot here. Let yeah, me You sense. have to think something's up. Yep. Okay. Got it. But, but it does cost an extra willpower point. Yes. It's going to cost two. Well, minimum. three. Minimum. Well, yeah. Two minimum. Oh, it's rank well, two. Okay. No, I'm up to three minimum. Yeah. Find magic. Now, this is a ritual spell. So let's see how long this ritual takes. Uh, it's personal. Their duration varies, and you'll see that in a moment. It's a was it? It's a day or forever or forever plus. Uh, forever greeting, plus. What that you'll see a uh, quill or a chisel. Uh, so skilled sorcerers and druids can bind spells to dead objects. I, I don't like that term, dead objects. It, it's inanimate objects. Inanimate, okay? yeah, inanimate yeah. objects, yeah, yeah. To create magical traps or powerful magical artifacts, you cast a spell like any other. And choose how many willpower points to spend, but you must also spend extra willpower to bind your spell to an object instead of unleashing its power immediately. Rituals sure. cannot be bound. Uh, so, roll for any overcharge of mishap when the spell is bound. So, you know, I created a magic yep. item, but then a demon grabbed me and pulled me into another dimension, and, you know, life sucks. Uh, the extra willpower... Actually, no. Hang on. Before you do that, read the rest of it. I want to see what else yeah. happens. The extra willpower do affect this roll, but don't count towards the power level. If you spend one additional willpower, the magic lingers for one day. Okay? Or? If, or until the spell is triggered. Yeah. If you spend two additional willpower, the magic lingers, lingers forever, but dissipates. Basically, a one use forever spell. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then if you spend five willpower points, the object lasts forever, and it, it can be used once per day. Yes. At the cost and willpower points equal to this. Oh, shit. So you're going to be a pretty powerful caster or a pretty risky caster to make this one. Yeah. You can bind the spell in whatever manner you wish. You decide how the spell is triggered. Common methods include certain phrase being uttered or that the, you know, like I, only I can make it through this door or something. Or that, uh, uh, or that the object is open, broken, or thrown to the ground. Once the spell is triggered, it has the same effect as if it had been cast normally. Okay. As if it had been cast normally. Now, it doesn't say, but 
it seems like non-spellcasters can use magical items. Yes, artifacts, yes. That means the roll is a carbon copy of your original roll yes. to bind it. So that also means if you screw up the binding and you have like three mishaps, every time that thing goes off, it's going to cause the person... No, 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 no. It, no, it, it only happens to the wizard at the time of the binding. So, but, so it won't happen. So if you, if he rolls three mishaps, that's not going to happen to the person using it. That only happens to the wizard as he's binding the item. But all of the successes that, that may add to the power level of the spell yes. and all stuff does, does transfer over to the yeah, user. Yes. Yeah, this isn't something that I've, I dove into, I've play tested this personally myself a long time ago. And what I came to the conclusion of is you are spending a ton of willpower to do this, to get a very minimal effect. Unless, true. unless you roll well, or you just only care that it's a one use item. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like the idea that the bonuses and the minuses transfer forever to the person who is using it. Because that that's a really cool way to introduce cursed items. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's a different way to introduce cursed items. But yeah, okay. I like this one though. Like, oh crap! I screwed this one up. I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. Or, or, <laughs> hear me out. I'm gonna give it to Bob. <laughs> Here you go, Bob. <laughs> Why is it always Bob? <laughs> <laughs> all right let's look at the last general spell and then for the rest of the spells we're just going to cover uh we'll cover a couple of them just so you can understand the theme of the talents okay transfer so arm's length so touch somebody immediate a drop of your blood well that's starting to sound gross right yeah but it's hey it's the easiest thing to get it's free yeah. you can use this spell to steal willpower points from others or to give your willpower to someone else oh that's so dark side i love it the base cost to cast a spell is one willpower, and you can then take or give as many willpower as you want. So the first one's on you, after that, hey, whatever you want. If your target opposes the transfer, it's not so easy. In this case, you transfer uh, no more willpower than the power level of the transfer. So if somebody's willing, you can take them all. Sure. The but willpower not, used to... Then you have to, to come out ahead, you have to pump up the power level of your spell without using willpower yourself, or it's just going to be a zero sum deal. I mean, you, I mean, I mean you, have, three, you get three. You have that, to use willpower. Well, you have to use one, right? Well, you but, have to use one, but if you're trying to bump up that power level, you have the ingredient. So there's, there's two. one and maybe you're a half elf. <laughs> that's three. So you're using one. You're possibly getting three. That's a good deal. But yeah. if you have to pump up to three using willpower, that you're only going to get three. What if they don't even have three? Then you're just boned. Yeah. <laughs> Violence says, what did Bob do to you? Give it to Dan. Yeah, you know what? Give it to Dan. We haven't talked oh. about Dan in a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, 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 can, uh, he can use that, uh, that, fight, that cursed fireball generator as he's jumping off the cliff. <laughs> you all right. Let's, uh, here's healing. Or bridge. We're, we're not, we're not going to uh, cover them all. I'm going to just scroll down slowly. I'm going to let he Heathen Dog pick one. Give me the Remember healing this. hands, baby. Give me the healing hands. Okay. So there are three ranks. Um, so, okay. Well, the healing hands. And then, you know, if you see another one you want us to stop at, we'll do that. So healing hands, rank one. Arms length, so you got to touch. Duration's immediate. And ingredient uh -oh. is clay. Clay. Which okay. shouldn't be also, too hard to get. to get. You know, five minutes of digging in most biomes. You'll get clay at some point. Okay. You can heal damage to strength or agility by laying your hands on the wounded. You immediately heal a number of points equal to the power level. The spell does okay. not affect critical injuries and you cannot heal yourself. Okay, number one, lame. Number two, <laughs> uh, heal damage to strength or agility, not both. That's an or, which mm -hmm. means you have to focus on one or the other each time yep. you cast. And this has absolutely okay. happened in a game where uh, a person needed both healed and you can only do one at a time. Yep. Yep. Okay. Hey, there's nature's cure, banished no, go, demon. Go to, rank two. go to rank two. Okay, well, okay, rank two is banished demon. Uh, okay. Purge Man. undead and resurrection. Men... Nope, that's rank three. Okay, and mend wounds. I mean, we can skip to the resurrection if you want. I don't care. We don't have no, to no, cover no. all the spells. Let's, let's do the the one above mend wounds. What is that? Uh, one banished above. demon. Yeah, banished demon. Okay, rank no, 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 two. No, no. Go, go, wait, no, that's, that's not it. Go down. Go down. Oh, purge there. undead. Purge undead. Okay, there it is. Purge undead. Rank two. Range near. Duration immediate. Hey, you can have a holy symbol. I mean, you are a druid, right? You probably got some missile. Probably get one of those at character creation because you're a druid. So whatever. Yeah. 
Dead rising from their graves is a violation of the order of nature, and they must be stopped. I hate druids I now. I hate druids I and everything to do with them. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. Uh, this is this is a factual statement. All right. Okay. This spell inflicts damage to strength equal to the power level on one undead target. Now, remember, Just, well, remember, most undead, at least the unthinking undead, don't have wits and empathy. They sure. just have strength and agility. So uh, th this is just doing damage to him. Basically, you're hitting him with a sunbeam, and it's doing holy damage to him, for lack of a better term. Okay. You said you want to see resurrection? Oh, yeah. Resurrection's the jam. Yeah. Okay. Rank three, arm's length, immediate item owned by the target. And no, I will not let you take a little cotton shirt off of the person. It's either going to be something meaningful or something expensive. So, uh resurrection is not a i hate it when resurrections are whack-a-mole now you can channel nature's forces to resurrect a dead person not as undead but truly alive because for That's some a reason good distinction yeah but why did it need to be said it's resurrection but okay you know fine well yeah it depends on your point of view i guess <laughs> okay <Fair enough. laughs> the more time that has passed since the target died the more difficult it is within the same quarter day requires power level one Within a full day requires power level two, and within weeks requires power level three. Weeks, you can still do this. If over, uh, or sorry, within a week, I'm sorry, within a week. If over a week has passed, the body is too decomposed to be resurrected. So you got a week. Well, hang person, on, hang on. What if I put him in a, in an ice box? You know what? If somehow you can come up with some science and justify that, that would never happen. Yeah, you, um, you probably can, but that's lame. So we're gonna move on. <laughs> Within the same quarter day. Uh, so if over weeks, uh, a person brought back to life loses one point of empathy permanently. Well, you can still get it through experience points, right? Thank you. But it's never gonna come back on its own. Uh, no, you don't. You can't raise attributes. Remember? Oh shit! That was the whole point of why you yeah. want to start a character as young and not old. Yeah fair um as having seen the world beyond the veil will change person's outlook on life forever yeah, the person you, might be you, angry you, like, dude i know what happens when we die i don't want to die or it could be like you took me back from the most beautiful yeah, place ever exactly. what is wrong with you exactly right i mean uh, it, it, it's either it's either ptsd for having gone there or you got ptsd for having to come back yeah. either way you're you're just a little more dickish than you used to be uh serenity okay uh, then and weather master uh so shape-shifting and we're just gonna unless you really want to see one we're gonna skip most of these but, oh here's the here they are animal speech cat's paw hawkeye beast master maybe we'll look at that one bear's claw deer dash animal form primal and soul. primal soul okay we can look at primal soul let's go to that one primal soul i've never had anybody play the beast master version so no, wait, i think i passed it yeah i passed it yeah primal there. soul there it is Everybody always goes healing, so. <laughs> Rank three, range long, wow. Nice. So that's out to 100 yards, or range meter, whatever. 15 yeah. minutes. One turn, 15 minutes. You need a claw or a tooth, which, you know what, if you've survived a few fights, you probably have that. Or take one of your own. Yeah, you can pull out, pull out a tooth. I mean, it's going to hurt, but you're a, you're a magic user. You're used to that, so it's um, fine. Now, Hawkman says use ice magic to freeze the corpse. Unfortunately, that is not in the core game. If you want something like that, you will have to buy the Bitter Reach. And the, yes, there's L in this. There's the new sorcerer in, the, in Bitter Reach is the Elementalist. The new druid in here is the Ice Druid or whatever it's called. I don't know why the sorcerer gets all the elements, but the druid only gets ice. But hey. Actually, it makes sense because it's a bit of reach and that's what's natural up here. I get it. But All right. So not in the base game, though, buddy. Not going to have it. OK, so you can awaken primal emotions in the minds of others. The power level must be equal to or higher than the victim's current wit score. So you want to get a dum dum. Or or uh, emotionally damage them enough. There, there you go. For example, you can bring up the rage of a boar, the laziness of a cat. Oh, come on now. Or the timidity of a sparrow. Exactly how the victim reacts is up to the GM. If you want to affect the mood of a crowd or, in a more general way, a small crowd requires power level two, a big crowd requires three, a whole village four. Oh, man. You, you, can, you can make everyone riot. This is the... the what, what's the Earth Dawn? Um, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, Troubadour power. Uh, yeah, exactly. I forget the name of it, but I know it's what you're talking It's not a motion about. song because that's one... No, per, no, uh, no. Yeah, you know it, what I'm uh, talking you, about. You can actually, you can actually turn the, turn the group think of yep. an entire crowd one way or another or stuff like that and that's exactly what this thing does and that is very dangerous because a group of people who who decide to choose violence 
is a very scary thing. All right, the next one. On the other side, a group of violent people, you can, you know, turn into an orgy. Really? I mean. (laughs) Well, it's got to be some sort of animal thing. So, you know, but yeah, because it's a druid, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Now, the last uh, last talent is awareness. We have a light bringer. True sight. Oh. Words of the wind. Far oh, sight. That, nope. True Done. path. Visions of the past. Divination, intuition, and telepathy. True sight. Okay. True sight. Rank one. Distant. So that means you can do as far as you can see. Basically, you can do this. Great. I mean, it's true sight. You're seeing, right? Yeah. It's range of sight. So I get it. One round, and you got to kill some ants. I mean, have a magnifying glass. Sure. Make, that makes sense too. You can enhance your vision to be unnaturally sharp and see details at distant range as if you stood right next to the object in question. Oh, that's you should have called cool. you should have called this hawk sight or something more druid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True sight also lets you see in darkness through smoke and fog and automatically see through any kind of disguise or shape shift. Okay, you, now now it's getting now it's getting cooler. Yep. Yeah, now it's where I don't like it anymore. <laughs> uh, you, and remember, I if for people who have watched other streams, uh, I remove True Sight from all my D and D games. It does not exist in the game yep. because I've had adventures ruined because of that. Now, uh, moving on here, so uh, you must have a clear line of sight to whatever you want to look at. Basically, you can't see through trees, but if you're on top of the mountain and you want to look way down kilometers away. Anything up to your normal line of sight, which is, which, you know, can be up to 10 miles in really, really clear weather. You will, you will, you will be able to examine as if it was right next to you. At the cost of your magnifying glass. Yeah. At the, at the cost of your magnifying glass, but whatever. I mean, uh, you, you can read fine print on a book that's a mile away. Now to be clear, so I don't get a bad comment. I know you don't have to use the magnifying glass. No, I'm just no. saying. Okay, uh, so we're skipping the rest. Of it. Now we're at sorcerers, okay? Sorcerers get four uh, possible talents or disciplines, where the druid only had three. So okay. symbolism, the discipline of symbolism uses runes, esoteric signs, and symbols that reflect the underlying patterns of the world. All right, let's... Uh, uh, jar carved symbolism requires no ingredients apart from the symbols themselves. If they are carved or drawn in any way, they count as ingredients from a rule standpoint, meaning the power level is increased by one. Drawing a symbol takes a few minutes and cannot be done in the heat of battle. Basically, you have to draw the symbol accurately, correctly, not beforehand. just draw. What's that? Probably beforehand. Yeah, probably beforehand. It's you can't a track. just. You can't just put like, a, okay, I'm done. I made my symbol. No, you are putting effort into that symbol. So carving a symbol in a stone takes one quarter day or more. The sorcerer decides when the symbol is activated. Even a drawn or carved, carved symbol only works once. Okay. So, but the difference is, is if you draw it on something that could get ruined pretty easily. If you carve it in something, you've got that thing, you know, barring something really weird happening, you've got that thing available to you. So what do we want? We have entice, horrify, paralyze. Blind, illusion, mind trick, puppeteer, power rune, and portal. Which one do you want? Okay, to look at? two of them right away. Horrify and power rune. Those are the ones that I'm worried about. Okay, so one and three. Horrify and power rune. Well, here's horrify. Wow, that's a short one. Rank yeah. one, range short, duration immediate. Pretty and doesn't even. Oh, that's right, because the only symbol you need is or is your symbol. Uh, the symbol awakens a deep fear in the victim who suffers damage to wits equal to the power level. No effect on monsters. Oh, so you can only horrify people. I would say anything that has like, yeah, generally speaking, yes. I wouldn't say it works on like an undead or something, but I don't see why it might not work on a minotaur or an ogre. Well, well I would let the game master make the call on that one. Okay. Yeah. If, if I were the game master, I would say if the description of the, of the enemy says monster anywhere. That's fair. Doesn't work. Fair. That's but fair. you know, animals, they're not monsters. They're it's a boar. It's it's a horse. You can horrify those. They're not monsters. I don't but know if this a game I sh- or a basilisk or whatever, those are monsters. You you can't horrify monsters. Yeah, I mean some games like Pathfinder is a good example. And I in Earth Dawn, actually modern Earth Dawn does this as well. There's a lot of difference. Like, is it a beast? Is it undead? Is it a creature? Is it a monster? Is it like Oh, here we go. Here we go. What reactionary gaming says uh anything with empathy stat. It like might because undead, like especially the the uh, the dumb undead, they don't have that stat, right? They don't have empathy, right? 
Yeah. So it would definitely he, 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 work he, on those. I'd have I, to look it up. have to see, you know, is, is there a correlation between things that I believe are monsters and things that have no empathy? Then if that's true, then that's, that's a, that's an easy, that's an easy glance and say yes or no. So I would have to look it up. It's in the game master guide. I didn't read the game master guide before doing this playthrough and I haven't run the game in a while. Um, I, I seem to remember that there are distinctions. I'm one of those people that don't like those kind of distinctions, but here in this case, it, I, it makes sense, I guess. Um, where well, seriously, you could have like 15 categories of what something is, but you know, uh, reactionary principle might be right on that, might be just anything without empathy, because there are caveats like that in the Game Master's Guide. So um, now, uh, what was the other one that you wanted to see? Power Rune? Power no. Rune. Was it Power, Power Rune? Rune. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a ritual. So it's going to take you some time to do it. Uh, arm's length, so you have to be able to touch something. You can charge a symbol with power. The symbol yeah. must be drawn or carved into an object, which is then charged with a number of willpower points equal to the power level. You yeah. can use the symbol later to cast spells. Oh, look at that. Oh, stored oh. willpower. Oh, it's stored a mana battery. Power. You don't need to bind magic to use the spell. Other spell binders killed in the art of runes can use your power runes if they have access to them, so keep them to yourself. Okay. Okay. No, this is cool. This is cool. Yeah. Like if you have say you know, a rock or, or a, a painting or some, some object, you, you carve a power root in it, you charge it up, you have it in your pocket. And when you want to use it, you, you grab it and then you just suck out the, cause your arm's length, right? So you got to grab it. So you, you, you grab it and you use the stored willpower rather, or use a stored willpower and your own willpower to create a nuke. Yep. Awesome. So, awesome. so Mr. Max, I know that goblins and orcs aren't monsters in this game because they're player characters, but I guess the question would be, is a minotaur, is an ogre? Because remember, ogre is a, is a, was a dwarf-human hybrid. Is it dwarf-human or dwarf? Whatever. Uh, hybrid? Is that a monster or no? Again, I hate games that have those like those 15 different layers of distinction. Well, that's a beast, not a creature. Well, that's a creature, not an animal. That's an animal. I was like, oh my God. Like, I sometimes think that stuff gets too crazy. And if it's just as simple as what you said previously, that it's anything with empathy, the, uh, yeah. I, I'll go with that. I like that concept. And this yeah, game does that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now let's go to Path uh, Stone Song. So stone singing originated among the dwarves and helps them shape the bedrock of the world according to the mission from the god Huge or Huge. I don't know. Uh, the discipline has spread from the dwarves to the elves and humans who have also found good use for this form of magic. There, what, uh, what do you want to see? We have dust from the deep. Stun, voice of the mountain. Stonesmith, stone storm. Wither, earthquake, iron song, and summon golem. Okay, stun, obviously, because that, that seems like something that a lot of newbies are going to have. And iron, no, summon golem sounds like something that a big bad would have. Okay. So yeah, stun and, and summon golem. Okay, stun. Rank one, short, immediate, and you know, if you have a horn. <laughs> ah, I'm stunned. <laughs> Your mighty voice is so strong. Or or your mighty playing. Or, or what? Yeah. Well, remember, uh, this is Stone Song, so you're usually going to be singing or chanting to get the magic out. Nope, I'm blowing uh, my horn, baby. In this case, you can blow your horn, yes. Uh, around you are stunned. Your song causes one point of damage to agility per power level. Ooh. You can di uh, distribute. That's pretty cool, because uh, I mean, most damage goes to strength, so people bump that one up, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, unless they're an archer of some sort, they don't... They're not using the agility, right? Yeah. Uh, you can distribute the damage across as many opponents as you want. Holy balls. But, well, if you if you do four points of damage, you can do two and two, or one, 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 or one, 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 two. Yeah. Uh, the targets may attempt to resist the effect by rolling for insight. Each success rolled negates one point of damage. No effect against monsters again. Again, there has to be. It's it, This is the second time we've read this about spells and monsters. There has to be a strong, you know, really solid delineation between monsters and not monsters. Uh, again, I don't have a, the Game Master Guide back there. Some of you guys out there in chat land can look it up or put it in comments. I just, I just haven't read it recently. So... Uh, what was the next one oh, you wanted to summon golem? Yeah, yeah, the last one, the the big the big whopper. Wow, that is long too. Yep. Okay. Summon golem, rank three, ranged near, so good. You're not summoning it on your own toes. Sure. Quarter day. Oh, it lasts a quarter day, and oh. you will for a benefit you get a stone or use a stone figuring. Is this a ritual spell? Uh, it is not. Not a ritual spell. No. Nope. Wow. 
Okay. Oh, and uh, some someone said something earlier. Uh, did I star it? Oh yeah, right here. I start it, but I'm going to get to it now because this is this is the second time it's going to come up. Uh, it's said in the very beginning of Magic that ingredients are used once and then lost. Specifically, it doesn't matter said. how common the ingredient is. Or if the ingredient is a $10,000 stone statue that looks freaking awesome. But guess what? I'm going to ruin it because that's what you do. When you use it as a spell ingredient, it is destroyed. It's gone. It's done. There is no coming back from that. So, no, your ingredients are one use only. Yep. And this is, remember, the benefit that it gives might not seem like a lot. But if you're trying to see something way down the line and you're trying to do effectively a scouting role, to see what's down there, every success matters. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to expend that, now, is magnifying glass hard to get? I don't know. It's it's going to be in the player's handbook, which I have right next to me, but I'm not, I'm looking at right now, but I'm not going to look it up. That's for your table. But it, don't cheapen the use of a focus by saying, oh, you know what, yeah, you've got a hundred of them, or make the, make the player buy them. You know, that's just... Or make them. Or make them. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I I can carve a stone figurine. It'll it'll take a half day, but if if I have the clay, I can do it. And next week, monsters specific category of creature in this game. Okay, so violence loves everything says it's a specific category of creature in this game. Okay, as, um, as, as long as it in the write up, it says if it's monster or not, this thing works. The other thing, um, remember, we're not covering it until next week, but you're going to have your stronghold, and one part of the stronghold is the ability to create your uh your items so uh, now uh, what are we doing with the stone golem here your song can summon a, ster a servant creature wow can summon servant creatures from the very rock nice it's like an obsidian yep. the golem obeys your orders during the present quarter day then it turns into an inanimate statue okay well at least it doesn't turn around and punch you in the face well, it, yeah, it gives you something it gives you art at the end that's nice right uh, then turns into an okay. The golem can only perform basic attacks, and it must remain within your view. Okay. The stats of the golem depend on the power level. Power level one creates a small creature with strength two, agility one, and, and stone, stone skin, skin with, with armor rating three. So that's good. Well, armor rating three means you roll three dice to try to avoid damage. Better nothing. Yeah, that is true. Every increased power level increases both strength and armor rating by one. Oh, so agility stays at one. Nah, that, that's fair. Okay. I mean, it's a big rock guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. You can also use the power level to create more golems at the same time. Every increase in power level creates an additional golem. For example, power level four allows you to create three golems with strength three and armor rating four. Wow. So th using this spell plus a power, plus the, the, the little power battery thing we saw earlier, <laughs> can there? create a, a squad of super hardcore killing machines. But... Just just so people don't get too crazy. But for six it's a, hours. It's a rank three ability, so you're not starting no. off the game with this. No, no. And uh, by this point, you're going to need those, you know, mo uh, you know, walking army of stone creatures. Oh, wait, wait. The last paragraph is important. This spell can only be used in the terrain type oh, wow. mountain or cave. You have to have sufficient rock. That's what it's trying to tell you, but mountain or cave quarry would do just fine right well there, there's no there's fine. there's no terrain type quarry in the game that would i either, know i know that would be mountain or cave yeah if, if you are around a whole bunch of loose rocks or say you're at stonehenge i'm I'm gonna let you do it yeah you know there's enough free rock around i'm gonna let you do it uh, what the the way the game would identify it is that quarry is either mountain or cave uh, like that's just how it would be done so Blood magic. I think this is the last one, isn't it? Blood magic derives yep. its power from life itself and its liquid essence. Blood. Okay, okay. Any, anyone who, who describes blood as liquid essence, I'm throwing garlic at. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Uh, through the power of blood, the sorcerer can both benefit and bleed the target of his spells. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. So where's the list? Why didn't we get a list for this Why don't one? we have a list? Where the hell's the list? Apparently, uh, you have to do... Oh, there we are. Oh, there we go. Okay. Firewalker, stir yeah. the blood, bind okay. demon, sure. blood bond, immolate, oh, blood curse, blood channeling, and oh, bind soul. Okay. We're looking uh, at that one. Uh, blood bond, I think, okay. is, is going to be good. And I'm looking at bind soul. Curse. Okay. No, no, blood. not bind soul. Don't, don't give souls are shit. Blood curse. 
that's uh, that's the mm, that's where we're, it's we're at gonna right do there. all three of those we're gonna do blood okay. bond blood curse and bind soul uh okay. so blood bond there's bind d oh, blood bond is. rank two arm's length got touch immediate your own target's blood oh well hey you have to use or, his or your own oh i'm sorry you're right i i did say that wrong your own or the target's blood so eh, right if, stab if him or stab you cut and bleeding you can use it if you are cut and bleeding you can use it you can cut yourself and you can use it okay well let's see or, or you have your blood in a little vial like uh like like some weird angelina jolie bullshit you could do that too it's good okay you can transfer blood and the inherent energy of it to or from another being of the same kin as yourself so if you're human oh, it's only going to another human 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 to human orc to orc elf to elf i get it okay you can transfer a number of attribute points of any attribute equal to the Ooh. power level to or from the target. Wow. The starting, the starting attribute rating cannot be passed. Oh, is this oh, a, he okay, this is a okay, heal? Okay. So this is basically healing damage yeah, by okay. damaging someone else. It's necromancy healing. Yeah, it, I love it. I love it. I'm all attribute, about it. Attribute points lost in this way can be recovered normally. An unwilling victim can make an insight roll with negative modification uh, equal to the power level. To resist the spell, the spell can be used to get a broken person up on his feet, but has no effect on critical injuries. Yeah, you, no. this is like, we don't, what, what happened to our druid? Where our druid, so remember, the druid can't heal herself, so she's down. Aw, oh, man! Well, wait, 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 who, who put her down? That guy over there? All right. Like I said. No, it has to be you, it has to be you or your target. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, okay. But oh, yeah, yeah. The target's covered in blood already. The the druid's oh, no. covered in blood. I'll yeah. use his. Oh, then so there you go. Then you're uh, then you're good to go. Yeah. All right. Remember the the material components just add to the roll. They're not right. They add right. add one power level. Yeah. Got it. Did you say bind soul? No. Oh, no that was that was a oh, okay. That's right. That's the one I said. Bind soul. Where's blood curse? There's blood bond. Rank two. It should be rank two. Yeah, it should be. Blood channel. Oh, there it is. Blood curse. Yep. Oh, it's a ritual. Oh, sweet. Okay. Unlimited range. Unlimited range. Wow. You could do this to the moon. <laughs> if the a moon had blood, I'm sure. Yeah. A quarter day per power level. Per and power level. So it's already three, right? So you're looking at 18 hours. Yeah. Base. But if you use your ingredient, which is hair or part of the victim's body, hair. Poink. I don't know. Part, part, or, part seems okay. Or, you know, a hairbrush. Pick out a hairbrush. It's all good. You got a strand of hair from them. Now it's four. Now it's a whole day. 24 hours. Now what does it do for this 24 hours? That's what I want to know. Let's you see. place a blood curse on your victim who must I'm be a living it. humanoid. I love that energy. Love you it. must know your victim's name and know who he is. At least approximately. No, 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 no. Oh, no, where? Where, he, where he is. Where they are. Yeah approximately so, like oh he's in he's in the village of yeah, scant that's that's okay. what i would do i'd say you okay. have to at least know he's in the village yes yeah. um or in the forest the, 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 forest, the forest of wayrith or yeah. the, the the mountains of thrall or whatever yeah, yeah right right the victim suffers damage to an attribute of your choice the amount of damage equals the power level and the victim takes one point of damage per quarter day until the full effect oh is reached. So we're looking at a minimum of four if you have hair or part of their body but let's just say you don't it's three. That's 18 hours. That that means three quarter days. They're, they're taking three points of damage to the attribute over the next 18 hours. They're going to be freaking the hell out. Hey, heathen dog, what are you doing for this quarter day? Oh, I'm making camp. Okay, while you're making camp, can you reduce your agility by one? No. No, no, you no, Will, you will do that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I phrased it as a question. No, it's not a question. It's a statement. You lost one agility. Oh, yeah. You're, you're I'm feeling... not making camp anymore. This is dangerous. <laughs> you're feeling fatigued. It's just tiring. Oh, it's not a good day. No, it was a great, bright, sunny day. Yeah, not for you. <laughs> no, not, not for me, man. I'm just not feeling it. And oh, then there is six one hours more later, you have a nap, you wake up, and, and, and suddenly you, your hand eye coordination is for shit, and you're, you're a little dizzy. You're like, what the hell? What the hell's going on? Am I poisoned? This is crazy. Yeah, I have I have to know bind soul. So uh, rank three ritual. It better be a ritual. Arms length duration. Oh, it varies. Why? Because souls are weird, I guess. And oh, oh ingredient sacrificial knife. <laughs> okay. You're Aztec now. Through this ritual, you can extract a victim's soul from his blood and capture it in a vessel of some kind, such as a mirror, a jewel, or a weapon. 
Your victim must make an insight roll with a negative modification equal to the power level. If the roll fails, the victim is bound to the vessel for a quarter day. That's it. Hang power on. level two or higher. Uh, power level two. Okay, sorry. Making the effect last one full day requires power level two or higher. And if you want the victim to remain in the vessel forever or up to <laughs> time of your choosing, requires power level three. Okay, that that's sure. whatever. That's fine. I can dig it. You can specify a condition that must be filled to free the soul. The victim can be freed by a dispel magic lame. While the soul is bound, the body is unconscious and can be killed with a coup de gras or possessed by another restless spirit. Uh, that's great. That's actually great. I, 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 I dig that. I dig that a lot. The, the reason being is because uh, this is a really great way to re replace leadership in an enemy structure. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. You have to use this spell twice. Okay? Twice. Use it once on whoever you want to inhabit the enemy leader's body. You put him in a gem. You have another gem ready. This gem is your good guy. This gem is the bad guy. And then you you go you go to the enemy leader. You take his soul and put it in here. The condition for release on your friend is a body nearby without a soul. Whoopsie daisies. He's in the he's in the the, the body of your. Yeah, enemy. I don't know if that would work. I'd have to look into that more. I'm not now saying that friend. can't happen, but uh, I, and I don't. When when this guy's free, he's got nowhere to go. He just dies. Yeah, I, I don't know if that would work that way. I'd have to look into that a little bit more because that I wouldn't necessarily off the cuff consider that a restless spirit. That's magic. You're magic jarred. Somebody else's magic jarred. Uh, you, I don't know if the body swap thing would work. At the same well, time, it says right there. Uh, while the, while the, the soul is bound, the body's unconscious can be killed, could grow, or possessed by another restless spirit. I wouldn't call hey, that a restless when, spirit when if it's you're released from the gem. And the condition I put on there was if there is a body nearby without a soul, it gets released. It is now a restless yeah, soul. Yeah, I think that's a player trying to use a linguistic trickery to defeat the game, and I say no. So Okay. <laughs> and again, your chair, your mileage may vary out there. Some of you might think I mean, that's it's the best tactic. It's a lot ever. of hurdles to jump through. I mean, you, yeah. you have to get to the enemy commander. Good luck, right? Yeah, I would think that the even with that command word, that the player would try to go back to his own body or the, the character. You try, but there's, that's not around. That's not a choice. I killed it to make sure he can't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, what, what's the one I wanted? The, it wasn't that was that, that was it. No, no. That that was that was that was all. That oh, was I wanted the blood curse. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So death magic. I forgot there was one more. Death magic draws its power from dead and dying beings from rotten decay. Practitioners of death magic, known as necromancers, can also steal power from living things by twisting and tainting them, which is the reason for much of the hate and fear these black arts stir up. Makes sense. Necro sure. The necromancers see themselves as seekers of truth, as of pioneers and explorers of the true nature of life and death. You know, it's funny. The most I dangerous bad guy is the one who thinks he's righteous. So violence tells everything says I'd allow it because if the PCs can do it, so can the enemy. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, carpet uh, of adhesion's the same way. I just cancel the spell. I don't. It, does, it doesn't exist. I, I do the same thing that he does with true seeing with carpet of adhesion because. It's it's one of those spells like when the when the if you stop the player from doing it you're you're nerfing them but if the NPCs do it you're you're screwing them over on purpose and it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so somebody had a comment about that. I think it was the evil GM who covers a lot of Palladium games. By the way, uh, I think he talked about that. What he does, he allows a lot of things to dissolve the carpet of adhesion. So if you've got alcohol on you, you can dump alcohol, and that will that will start to dissolve it. And you, I don't know if you make another save or if you can just use a strength check or whatever to get through there. But he allows many different methodologies for getting out of the carpet of that, adhesion. That's that's a homebrew thing. He can is, he can do yeah. that at his table if he wants, but it's not in the book. Well, yeah, but I wasn't saying it was in the book. I'm saying that yeah. there are, but there are ways around it. And, and I, one of the things that I would stress about is that every game must be homebrewed. There's literally no game ever written ever that is perfect out of the box. Now, how the homebrewing works is up to you and your table. He takes carpet adhesion out. I take true seeing out. Those are homebrews. You know, are there ways around that? Like the other methodology? Because I'd rather not take something out of the game. So maybe if it worked at the table okay you're stuck for a round you dump some alcohol in there because you're smart enough to have some booze on you and there goes your whiskey but oh no that would never happen in in any game i rent if, if i have to tell someone that okay if they have a bottle of booze on them number one they're out their character is an alcoholic they are not going to dump their booze just so they can live that's stupid they're going to drink it so they can die happy duh 
Okay, Heat and Dog lives in a weird world. So we're going <laughs> to move on here. <laughs> it's like... All right, let's well, see what we no, got. No, no actually, I, I forgot. You're right. We were talking Palladium Games because you probably already rolled up the Insanity Alcoholic, right? <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Be Death foul, Magic. Be foul. Chill, chill, of chill of the Grave. grave. Contaminate. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Contaminate, Ghoulish Glare, Hand of Doom, Raise the Dead, Speak to the... Okay, why is Speak... Okay, and it's alphabetical. Never mind. Yeah, it's uh, alphabetical. Steel Life and Terror, Weight of Ages. Well, that's just so cool. We got to look at that one. But okay. I'm thinking chill of the grave okay. is both going to be thematic and scary to the straights so let's right. do that one rank one so it's an easy spell right arm's yep. length one round per power level okay. and piece of crystal if you want it to be stronger you let the unrelenting cold of cold of death seep okay cold of death seep where is it into your victim the victim becomes cold oh that's a condition oh cold condition yep Immediately suffering one point of damage to both strength and wits as a result. That is the cold condition, yes. The victim continues to suffer one point of damage to these attributes each round until the total amount of damage to each attribute equals the power level. This spell has no effect on monsters. Holy balls, dude. Wow. You just that got put into... That is freaking core. Yep. You can easily get that to three with only minimal effort. And then after, th after three rounds, your enemy is basically a small crying child. Yep. Your minus three strengths and minus three wits. Jesus, man, you're done. That hits you both ways. All right. Weight of ages. Rank three, arm's length, immediate scalp with white hair. <laughs> got to get an old guy. Got to get lady. <laughs> hey, sorry, I got to do this, but what? <laughs> I need that. Uh, it says scalp, not just white hair. You need the scalp. Scalp with white hair. Oh, I can paint it white. No, you can't. The, because the idea is old. You have to get something proven to be old. And you have to scalp it. <laughs> yeah. Now, does it say a person? No, a but scalp with I'm going gonna, gonna to say, yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. If you try to use a Yeti on me, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Uh, you can speed up the agent because, again, you're a necromancer. You're supposed to be evil, creepy, doing weird stuff that, you know, most people don't like. And you know what? You just happen to scalp somebody. Sure. Uh, you can speed up the aging process of a living being. The victim immediately ages 10 years per power level. Oh, yeah, this well, is why you need the scalp and not just some white hair. Right, right, right. Else this spell would be used too much. If the victim, as a result of this, changes age category, permanently lose one point in attribute... Uh, well, oh, come on. Of his choice. choice. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah. If the victim ages pa uh, past twice the maximum age for an adult, for example, 100 years for a human withers and dies this spells no effect on elves or monsters okay okay well elves, elves are immortal or monsters why elves i mean they're you know, immortal screw you elf all right no, elves, yeah, elves. Yeah, you live a long time whatever no no, no. they're so they're immortal they're they're made out of a gem oh they are they're immortal okay then never mind and okay but here, here's the thing again this spell plus the power stone spell the the, the power battery spell mm -hmm. would decimate anyone because you can easily have five, maybe even six. That means they're going up 50 or 60 years. They, just, you, they lost that fight. Do you they're, remember they're what it was like to be touched by a ghost in Dungeons yeah. and Dragons? My, yeah, yeah. So does every, every player who's ever saw a ghost the second time. They remember <laughs> too, and they run away. <laughs> All right. So that is it. This this segment. See, I knew I cursed it when I said we'd be quick yeah. today. Uh, well, it was my fault. I was adding. I was adding stuff in there. That's but fine. let's let's see what we have for. But before you do that, I want to talk about what's next week. Next week is going to be journeys. This also includes the survival mechanics of the game. So, L, if you're watching, yes. Now you're going to find out why I love the survival mechanics of this game so much. We're going to talk about that next week. We're also going to talk about the stronghold next week. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to cover. But I'm going to breeze through. Uh, because once you get the one aspect of the journeying down, I don't have to talk about hunting and then foraging and then fishing, and then you'll get the idea because it's all pretty much similar. So, sure. uh, all right. So that's next week. What do you got? Right. So we got Nerdy Org comes up with hate yourself enough to inflict pain on yourself, not so much as to try and kill yourself. Yeah, that that's the whole spell casting idea. Like you have to put yourself in danger, but be smart enough to have it not be mortal danger when casting any spell. Which makes sense. Yeah, that's exactly it. And Mar Hawkman says, well, 
even though they only have these spells in the book, it's said in there, you, you get with your game master and whatever the game master approves can be used. So the easiest way is to take a spell, tweak it, and maybe even the game master, hey, that, that's better than, that does everything the first spell does and doesn't break the game, but it's cooler, faster, has more thematic effect, whatever. We'll use that instead. You know, hey, it, I want the spell to actually work on monsters instead of not. Okay, yeah, exactly. you know, what? let's, wanna, add, let's add two ranks to it. Yeah, I want to. I want a spell that works on monsters because you know what I fight lots monsters. Monsters. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, this this is when we were talking about turning a turning yeah. entire crowd from from a from a riot inducing uh, nastiness to a giant orgy, and then it comes up. Wait, fur pile? What? No, no, no. Rabbits. That is the the animal essence you're pulling. The the uh, the pr the prolific nature of rabbits throw that into the crowd they'll start humping everybody it'll be great he's i don't know mode. if that'll work i don't know I, don't, I it depends on your game master if he's weird or not or if he's a furry it may help but dangerous bad guy equals heathen dog yeah yeah the the obviously i'm, I'm doing it for effect so you don't have to i'm seeing if i can break the game in an instant to show you that hey this is what you don't allow players to do at your table and, and, and to, to be fair fact. like no but there's also it's also good to have different perspectives because tables run differently and yes there are rules so the I, good i'm glad you put that one up there no i'm not going to show you because it's withered and great and it's falling off because yeah, no, it's 60 years it. older you don't see it. <laughs> did, did, did he touch me to my ding ding yeah how's it look you don't want to know man yeah. you don't want to know that <laughs> but but it, but it's there are some aspects you know the books are thick but they're pretty lore heavy right well this isn't this isn't the game book right let me get the game book the information in this book is it covers so many aspects of it that uh you're gonna have to make a house ruling at some point but it this game provides you the framework everything you need to make that ruling and if heathen dog sees it one way and i see it a different way absolutely because we've envisioned our tables differently Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that what he's doing is wrong or what i'm doing is wrong it just means that i want a different experience at my table than him and one of the first thing he knows this and i say this uh, a lot in like the friday stream is the first thing i see he doesn't give players agency <laughs> but the first thing i look for at any point when when a player comes up with something that isn't expressly written is like how are you going to try to screw this game basically what he said how are you going to try to break the game and that is yeah. the first thing it, it might be the most innocent innocuous concept first thing i look at is well first answer is no why is it no can i justify the no oh maybe i can't like right off the bat what was that one we were talking about where i was like no and then it's like well maybe that actually isn't oh the, the dispel magic thing yeah we'd, we'd have to i'd have to look at that more but my first reaction is no and i know that's that's so anti-player no it's no, because no, i've it's seen safest Yes, it's a safer answer. It keeps the game going and it, it yes. stops possible breakage. Exactly. Exactly. It's now, a safe path. I'm probably more willing than him after the fact to say, have somebody convince me that that's, you know, once I made the decision that it was the wrong decision in terms of changing it to the player's favor. Mm hmm. Uh, so you know what a actually after further review i think we can allow that and why it didn't happen at that point i don't care it doesn't matter we're moving on but my character died yep he did make a new character uh you know but but ulti ultimately it's how what you want at your table the frame i promise you this the framework is there in this game to do all the things you want to do but you have to be a game master that's willing to make some rulings based on what's yep. up now, if you're all about unfettered, like violence sells everything, said I'd allow it because the PCs can do it, so can my villains. Great. That's fine. It's but, fair, but you're going to have to be ready for some kickback. Yes. When, when it's done to them, you got to be ready for the players to hate your ever living guts. That's why I remove Carpet of Adhesion. That's why he removes True Sight or True Seeing in D&D &D because it's, it's so broken. It's so hard to adjudicate. Screw it. No one gets it. So PCs kill a king because its soul was swapped with the bad guys, but nobody believes them, and now they have to find a necromancer to speak to the dead. Well, no, you don't need that because a spell is happening right now. So any kind of sense magic will will sense the the magic on the on the king who has a traitor inside him. You know, it would will. it after the, the fact though? Because the magic isn't the magic isn't no. permanent. It's well, it, it is it is permanent because I you, took the you, book down. You you can't extricate the soul. 
you can't get it out. There, there is no time limit for the soul yeah, being in the body. I'd have to I, oh, I, let me look it up real quickly. Does this? I mean, if the soul is there, wouldn't yeah, that make the soul, soul now? I, I would say because it was put there by magical effect, okay. and it is not returned to the normal state, like the king's soul in the king's body. That would be normal state. It would still okay. be faint magic. It would be permanent faint magical effect. Well, it says in duration varies, and then it went to quarter day. Yeah, so yeah, varied. I guess wh while that's yeah. in there, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now the duration is only for having the soul inside the object. So once it's outside the object and in a body, there is an argument to be made that the spell is over. Well, power level three, though, it, it can be permanent. The vessel. Yeah, forever. yeah, but that, that that's permanent inside the object, not inside a body. It's inside the object. Once it's outside the object, the spell technically is over. Whether or not you have the right soul in the right body is immaterial. The spell's over. Yeah, I think that's overcomplicating a spell. My yeah, it is. See, see <laughs> you, you can really go down a rabbit hole with this stuff. So it's important that the game master set a set a thing right then. Boom. No, this is the line right then. And then you got fifth. You got anywhere between five and fifteen minutes after the game. If you can't convince your game master in 15 minutes that you're right, then you're not. Uh, then we'll we'll finish up with this one. How is carpet adhesion hard to adjudicate? It's not hard oh, to no, adjudicate. No, no. Uh, the, the, the effects of the carpet itself are very clear cut, yep. but everyone hates it when done to them and everyone loves it doing it to other people. So much so that they become irrationally yes. happy or irrationally angry. And I just mm -hmm. don't want that at my table at all at all i don't want it i don't want to deal with it i don't want it's 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 kind of like uh you know in in your house like you don't want black mold in your house i don't want carpet adhesion in my game <laughs> it's just it, to, to me it's the same thing it's, you know, people it's people go off producing frustration people yell at me a lot of grog nerds yell at me because of what i say about true seeing because i take it out of all my D D campaigns i don't take away other spells that give uh, um insights uh, not abjuration. Oh my god, divination. I don't take I only yeah. take away that one. Yeah, that one spell. Well, he would also take away the psionic power of omniscience because it's uh anything that's it's it's, it's, it's it's true sight without having to be able to look at something. Good news is I don't allow psionics in my game anyway. Yeah, so he doesn't allow psionics anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, omniscience in second edition AD and D is uh is an ever increasing sphere of knowledge that you have. And when I say it starts off at, let's just say, I forget the exact range. Let's say it starts off at 10 feet. You are completely aware of everything within 10 feet of you. You know exactly what it is. You know exactly what it does. You know everything about it. And then every round you maintain, it, it doubles in size. 10 becomes 20. 20 becomes 40. Your sphere of omniscience is increasing. That means everything in there you know about. If a god is viewing you, you will know it. If if there's an astral being viewing you, you will you will see them. You will know you don't have to see them. You will know they were there and you know who they are and you know what they want to do. You know everything. I don't allow that. I don't allow that sonic power either because it's just way too strong. Way too strong. You can easily break a campaign doing it. So now that we've talked about other games in Forbidden Lands as well, <laughs> uh, well uh, there's a couple other comments on here we'll, we'll hit uh, after we're in the break in between uh, videos here. But uh, like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, if you think the, you know, let us know your thoughts on the magic system. If you think that Heathen Dog and I made good calls or bad calls with some of our quote unquote house rules or whatever, let us know. But uh, other than that, next week, again, is going to be journeying, the survival mechanics, and strongholds. So look forward to that.